This conference and will now be recorded. So welcome to you, Elsa. And since we have given a brief to uh, Dr. Mukherjee, you know, uh, with reference to this, so maybe you know, few words from your side. Okay, I think we could hear that, so maybe we can start. Can can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Okay, I'll off the video just to make sure that we don't we have enough bandwidth. So I'm going to start talking maybe about 10, 15 minutes, and then we will take as many questions as we can. I've also got the team, like I said, online with me, so they can also help with some of the questions. So I've given the title Entrepreneurship and uh, Pharma Startups. So the, the people I have introduced you to earlier was Pajista, Sumitra, Arjuna, and Arshani. They work with me at the IIT Madras Incubator. So they sometimes support me. So let's see how to get the next slide. Oh. oh, it doesn't switch. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to do this. Just let me work out how to switch the slides. Share screen, share. Can you see any, my slides or it's not visible? Uh, so slide is not visible. We can only see the panel. Okay, so let me see what's wrong. Now you can yeah, see now, the slide. Now, now we, we can, can see. see. But it's not switching. That's uh, okay. Never mind. I'll use it manually and switch. Okay, before I start, I always like to do this. All of us who are present here, I'd like you to spend 30 seconds to jot down what you hope to achieve by end of the uh, 45 minutes, one hour we are going to spend together. So I think that's very, very important. So I will pause for 30 seconds and you can write it down. You don't have to share it with anybody, just for your own self. Now we can see your slides. Yeah, your yeah, slides I can see, but they're not, uh, it's not very easy. Oh, I've got it working, good. I've got it working, good. So, so my father can be happy for the money he's trying to send me to engineering school. At least it works. Okay, so 30 seconds, just jot down everything, then we'll just start. So I'll talk a little bit about entrepreneurship, what is uh, a typical entrepreneur does, and then I'll talk a little bit about, in particular, pharma. Okay, one of the things we really, really need to do is uh, be able to, entrepreneurs are usually full of energy, they drive, the entire team. Most people get up in the morning and they're not very keen to go to work. So that's not something an entrepreneur does. They're usually very, very excited about what they do. They like to go to work. They're very self-confident. Of course, we lack that in this country and in, in a lot of colleges. Students are not very confident. They always think by saying they're not confident, they're okay, but we need to make them confident. So that's part of the incubator's work to ensure that we can make them a uh, little bit confident. We, we use money as a measure. It's not the only criteria. So you would look at all the people who've been doing great jobs. They don't really need money. Most of them have plenty of money. It's just they need to be able to use something as a measure. And they always like to have a problem solving attitude. They don't have any issues. Like you see, I didn't panic just now. I was quite calm about getting the PPT working. And if it didn't work out, I still continued manually. So those are things we need to be cautious about when we are working together as entrepreneurs. And then we take moderate risk. So these are some of the things very, very important as an entrepreneur. So next slide we talk about, they need to be able to deal with failure. Most entrepreneurs have a problem in dealing with failure. And because of this, they, they tend to worry too much and they start to fail. So that's not a, it's not a good sign. You must be able to take failure as part of the learning. 
And one another thing entrepreneurs need to learn to be good at is taking feedback. Uh, we shouldn't criticize them at the incubator. We should be giving them feedback. Criticism doesn't help anyone. It just hinders them from pro processing, progressing. So it's always good for us to help them, give them feedback so they can improve from feedback. That's why the mentoring role, which I spoke about last week, is absolutely crucial. And then most of these entrepreneurs need to have initiative and you need to be responsible. You don't wait on other people to give you work. You don't expect other people to help you. You need to be making your own things to work. And most of us have very little resources. Just like our incubator, we run in a very, very thin incubator. We are probably with the least number of employees we have compared to any other incubator, even though we have only startups out of the incubator. We have now, right now we have four staff. In the past, there's only two of us, myself and one manager. So we try to use our resources very carefully so we get the maximum out of it. And often entrepreneurs only compete with themselves. They do not compete with others. You would have probably heard people like Shah Rukh Khan or Prinka Chopra always say when they're in an interview, they always ask them, who do they want to become? They always say, no, they want to become better than what they are. So it's always competing against yourself. So that's something we can learn from even people like them. Um, and it's always internal control. Many, many times entrepreneurs are not able to internally control both wins and losers. So we have to be able to hold all together, otherwise your team falls apart. And it's a lot of uh, ambiguity. You need to be tolerant. It's not like going to a job. I mean, today the job is also ambiguous with all this COVID-19, but the entrepreneurship is generally even more ambiguous even before these times. So these are some of the things entrepreneurs need to watch. And this is something we talk about in our book. Uh, the ones earlier I showed you, they're not from my research. They're, they're from research from all over the world. They're, they're very well known studies. These are our own work, which we have done over the last 20 years. In our book, we talk about what an entrepreneur must be. First and most important, an entrepreneur must have a vision. And this vision must always be changed. So if I'm doing a live demonstration, I would have made all of you write your uh, vision first, and then I would have continued from that. And most of, the, most of the time, what we do, we should have fun. We should be able to relax what we do. Otherwise, it's not much going to happen. Next thing, you need to have time for family and prayers. I say, I'm not preaching for going to become religious or nothing, but most people, even in those who say they don't believe in God, they even say, God help me when things are bad. So all this helps us. And most young people forget to have time for exercise. And in, it doesn't take very long to become 50, 60, 70. Unless you keep yourself healthy, you will always have struggling. So you need to be able to every day spend some time, do some exercise. And the next one there we have had there is, you should always have urgency. Urgency to get things done and excitement. It has to be, whatever you do as an entrepreneur, you need to be so excited about it. And the next thing we say is that last slide we showed you is a must. This to be an entrepreneur, it's to be. So you need to be open. If you're not open, you won't be willing to learn. So it makes sense. Unless you're willing to be open, you'll not be willing to learn. So, next thing, you need to be yourself. You don't worry about anything else and others because nobody really cares about us. We have to worry about ourselves. And as I said, we need to be able to learn, we need to be open, then only we'll be able to change. And all this, you may ask me, I'm contradict myself. Just now I said have urgency. Now I say have patience. Many, many years ago, my dentist told me, he used to have three chairs. And I asked him, doctor, why do you have three chairs here? He says, it's because of urgency for my patients. The reason he had three chairs was each time he sedated one of them, it take half an hour or so. So he'd be wasting half an hour sitting and waiting for the patient where he could actually use his time more willingly. But he told me, I never rush. I, I urgency for my patients, but I never rush. So we need to have patience, but we must always have urgency. We must be helpful and respectful to others. Very, very important. Today, you see that lacking. So we need to work on that. It needs to be serious and result oriented. Most of them think starting startups now is to make money and that's it. Most startups don't make money. So we need to be very, very cautious about this again. And next one we say, be thankful for whatever as an entrepreneur we have. And we also say, this is what we should be. You should know where you're heading and you should know how to handle success. 
most people don't know how to handle success. You see that in in our Indian movies. Many of the time, people get fun, get rich, and they start treating everybody badly. So it's the things we need to learn how to handle success. We should never feel sorry for ourselves because nobody really cares. And we should keep writing positive statements to make sure our days are run well. And I put that very important, earn it. When you earn something, it's very, very important. This is something my father used to tell us when we started working maybe 25 years ago. It's always nicer if you earn it and you don't have to depend on anyone else. Next one, I always tell my entrepreneurs, plan tomorrow this evening because for that for the reason for that is so whatever you miss today you can have it on the list for tomorrow work never finishes so we cannot be here in office all day long so we need to be able to move so this is some of the things we should be able to do now what does it demand to be an entrepreneur you have to give everything you have into the venture you need to be really really committed complete commitment which is what many startups don't have they need to be creative they need to be innovative and most important, especially in pharma, you need to have the knowledge of subject and you need to have the ability to build a team because you cannot do this on your own. You need a team and then you create economic values. And especially in pharma, you need to have ethics, you have to have, to have integrity and reliability as an entrepreneur. These are some of the things an entrepreneur needs to do. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about what is different between pharma and other startups. I'm one of those people don't agree and we strongly don't agree, and I've done this even in Europe and the US, all startups are not the same. Every startup has, is different. It requires different skills, different funding, different environment. They are not the same. The certain things are the same, but they are not the same altogether. First of all, pharma, it takes a, a huge time. It, there's a time lag. So you need to be able to be patient, to wait. It might even take you seven years. You need to be able to wait first. Secondly, scaling pharma is also tough. So you need to be able to do that. Next one is you need huge amount of funding. It's not just one lakh, two lakh. You need probably several crores to get to the next stage. You also need to have in-depth knowledge how to build these pharma solutions. You also need to know where the market are. For example, right now, if we're able to produce drugs in India to solve the problem, we will be having a huge amount of market around the world. So this would be an example of a reverse engineering where from a developing country where the Westerners use, especially our generic medicines, they're going out, as you know, to lots and lots of places. Another thing which pharma startups miss out is regulatory. You need to confine to regulatory from the day you start. So you don't later on say, oh, I did this startup. I didn't know this, I didn't know that. So you need to be very careful. And I already said, not all startups are the same. I've given you a link there where the, the top 55 startups in pharma, how much money they've risen last year is there. And the last one is the top 50 Indian pharma. So what I suggest for you to go into that website and enter your startup. They allow people to enter their startups. So you enter your startup so people will be able to reach you and find you what you're doing. So today, as you know, is Visa Day. As you know, they they actually look at the birth, the death, and also the life. And our father said this morning, I had to life. Not, and I like the way it says, the biggest communication problem is that we don't listen to understand, we listen to reply. And I think that's very true in the areas of startup. Most startups don't listen to understand, like to listen to reply. So I think with that slide, I'm going to stop for the moment and take some questions. I've got my incubation manager, my pre-incubation, and I've got the person who does all the web minas, and I also have uh, our manager who does rural healthcare or aging and health. We run a program for childcare and maternal care. We have fellows running this pirate program, so she's also online. So any of the any areas which I'm unable to answer, they will try to answer. If none of us know how to answer, I'll get back to you with an answer. That's a promise. So over to you guys, and let's try to make it as interactive as we can. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mathu. Thanks for our wonderful insights. Uh, so first of all, I will I welcome our Vice Honorable Vice Chancellor uh, Goyal, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Hello, hello, Professor Goyal. How are you? I can see you waving. Yeah, 
So now hmm. I would like, ma'am, if you want to start with some questions, Dr. Pope. Uh, yeah, thank uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mutu. It was really wonderful to hear you and you know to uh, cover all the aspects of pharma. But since you know a lot of students and new entrepreneurs, you know who has joined us to have your kind of a wisdom. My first questions to you is when we are talking about. Uh, startup ecosystem for basically a pharma industry. So what I can see is there are four things which you have mentioned we need to overcome. One is the higher cost, the low approval rates, the long time to market and the poor data quality. So what is your advice when they move alone? Because at the time of ideations, you know, they have just the idea and their team is very small. So how do they take care of the in the futures of the patients, regulators, sites, um, you know, CROs probably for the clinical trials. And, and you know, I'll just add on. And how do you think it is different than, you know, how do they differentiate? Because many times they don't differentiate uh, being, uh, being doing, doing a scientific, scientific studies or being a product which, which they wanted want to, to take, take for a market. market. So, so right, right from a beginning, big how do you differentiate the scientific, scientific product, product development and the product development to the entrepreneur in the pharma space? Hope, Hope I'm clear, clear about, about the question. Okay. It's a bit, bit long, long and complicated and as the pharma industry. industry. So that's a great question. I think first of all, your, your entrepreneurs will need to actually do a lot of uh, homework. They probably need to do a hell of a lot Hello. of literature research, literature research, and find out what is happening find in the market. What is happening? What is happening? It's sort of echoing. Yeah, it's better. Thank you. So some of the things I think they need to do is they need to do a lot of research, uh, re literature review, make sure they find out what is happening. And most of the startups don't know what, what are the others are trying to do. And because they're going to spend so much time, it's always important first thing to find out what all is happening in the market. And this is not only in pharma, even in the other areas, people say there's no other competition, but there's a whole lot of competition. So they'll need to spend a whole lot of time to make sure they understand what is happening in the market first, not necessarily the requirement, but what is actually the status at the moment, and then start building from there. That's my first advice I would give. Secondly, they also need to understand there is two things they need to always be cautious of running a startup, especially life sciences, pharma, and so on. One, it takes a long time. Second, it takes a lot of money. So you need to be able to, you, meet, you need to be willing to spend that time to, and not, Way. So that's very, very important. Secondly, they need to be able to know how they're going to raise their money from each stage. I mean, Pyra gives 50, 50 lakhs. You know uh, full well, 50 lakhs doesn't get past six months what they're doing. So they need to be they need to be ready to go to the next stage. So that's why sometimes it might be better if they have bigger chunks, but in broken up by stages. For example, uh, one of the agencies could say, we will give you 50 crores over a three year period. We will give you first a crore rupees to do something. Then we'll give you another five crores. Then we'll give you 10 crores. At least there is a plan that we don't have right now. So that's probably something um, that the grant makers, granting bodies will have to look at. That's one. Secondly, another issue we have is all the drugs that are only used if they get FDA approval. So that's something, a mindset I think we need to change. We probably need to have our own sort of a body which will approve. And then the doctors, I think they're the bigger, they're the bigger players here. They will have to subscribe this uh, drugs which are generated in India. So that will create our own market. Right now, if you go, if you go to any of the doctors, even for instrumentation, they all like to use uh, Western instrumentation, not Indian instrumentation instrumentation. We struggle that even in our own med tech incubator where a lot of the things people don't want to buy because it's made here in india so these are things which i think it's a mindset change of the user and also the producer so i think hope that throws some light into what you asked me
yeah, yeah i think, I think, uh, I think uh, yeah. you have yeah. covered yeah. broadly yeah. you know the most, most of the things, things. Uh, abhinav you have yeah. another question yeah. or yeah. someone yeah. else then yeah. i'll ask that yeah, yeah. Uh, so sir my question was basically related to the funding aspect as we see now the entire world is stalled in terms of economics and businesses and what do we understand now the government start the government grants like biorec dbt mm -hmm. and all the other grants so if as of now i think the major focus of the governments and other agencies are basically to fight covid 19 as of now and down the line the Correct. businesses are suffering to an extent so now my question is that and farmer related startups required a hell lot of funding uh, for their mm -hmm. time to get into the market and what i am also hearing from other startups is the funding now and as hmm. of the corporates are also not working to into their regular businesses so i the most of the startups are funded from their csr schemes if hmm. the pro, if this corporates basically deals with a loss in profits so the the budget for csr will also decline drastically so how do we cope up in these next stages of funding that what i foresee is about to come see is a good and bad if the funding becomes tight you start get better teams right because there won't be so much funding available the lousy teams will fall out see right now we are having every every byrac call they there about a thousand people apply so as the, as money gets tighter there will be less people apply so we might actually be more productive when the money is shorter and this covid thing will probably last for one other what a year 18 months we don't know so i think okay. if we are spending on public money then there's going we are all going to be struggling and any and also now right now most of the grants like you rightly said they are not giving it to rnd even for covid rnd it's only for deployment mm -hmm. we are running we are doing a program now for dst uh, eight centers or eight or nine centers have been selected around the country we are one of the centers to for deployment of covid activities but they are not giving money unless the startup is ready to deploy it so that the r and d grant also now stopped they are not running mm -hmm. so, so, so how do you force yeah so this is going to so what we'll have to do is uh, definitely there's going to be dropouts in the startups because there won't be any funding and most people will start to uh, probably look for a job is something you and i can't do very much it's just like an entrepreneurial activity this it is a survival of the fitness unfortunately <laughs> unfortunately i can't i can't give you a positive <laughs> answer because i will i'll be lying if i did <laughs> we've, already, we've already started talking at the innovation center how if people are only working 50% of the time how do we ask them not to come to work <laughs> when you go back to work that's how bad it is so i'll be lying yeah. if i tell you money will come back it's not you know even though a center like ours we have money for another year or so but we are already starting to look at you know how not to take back people who are only working for 50% of the time in the past that wouldn't have been a question we wouldn't have been bothered we would have just left it be because we work with a lot of commercial research industry as you rightly said the industry is not going to be spending money on us Mm. so a short answer to you is i don't have an answer for you how you are going to solve your funding crisis uh, so i just want to uh, look from a different uh, different perspective so mm. what should be our policy in uh, tightening our screening processes you need to tighten your screening processes but you see if you tighten it then everybody see one of the things i always tell the new incubators don't be too strict because we're too strict that news travels around and then nobody comes to you if you don't fill the incubator right. you also don't have an ecosystem right right among themselves they need to learn so what i what we do at our incubator is we run a pre incubation program as well so mm -hmm. we don't sign them up per se we let them come in and join and they can come and do everything an incubator does we give them 3 to 6 months and if they are going in the right path we we then convert them into a an incubator otherwise we ask them to go home so in that we have done over 50 companies in the last 18 months and only one in three turns out to stay oh, if you know what right. so if oh, you can right. get one in five if you can get one in five to convert at pre incubation you are doing a good job 
Right. And then if uh, you can yeah. get one in every three of your incubators breaking even, you've also done a good job. Okay. So, Did the it, uh, it's a question of learning. Yes. Yeah. I have Sorry, another please. question which has come from uh, one of our startups. He has been working on some uh, herbal formulations. So, since as you know that, uh, you know, India has got a history of a lot of uh, herbal combinations and, uh, you know, they became very excited very soon, not having much of a results. But what do you think is the government strategy? Because, you know, uh, I know that, you know, if you go through the process, you have to go through uh, trials, clinical trials, and also, you know, the protocols, so, complete protocol. So is there herbal anything? Products, herbal products, for, have, herbal uh, products like, are not not uh, they're not compiled to all those uh, stringent examination they have a they have a easier route so because they can use they, they don't have to herbal medicine doesn't need the same requirements as uh, allopathic medicine even in the us so it's uh, uh i use now they have formed the Ayush Ministry. They they can they will be able to help them in those things. Regulatory frameworks for uh, herbal products are easier than otherwise. And anyway, the regulatory processes are going to become easier and easier because of this COVID thing. Because they need to be able to quickly get things through. So I, I don't see much of a problem in terms of regulatory for them. What you cannot do without checking, you cannot claim it kills. You can say it helps. You cannot say uh, my drug will cure cancer in herbal medicine. You can only say it, it can help. That's the only catch in herbal medicine. Yeah, agree. Uh, agree. So that's something you want to look at. Somebody has typed a question. Are the situation like crisis is good for time for startup? Yeah. I think it is a good time to start up with this crisis because we usually do a seminar partnership. One opportunity to get through crisis, right? Like right now, people who are not making a ventilator started making ventilator. People who are not making gloves have started making gloves. People who don't do face masks start making face masks because the rest of the factory can't do. Now, one of our staff used to work for me uh, earlier. He's now got a a, a t-shirt company down in. Uh, E road side. He just sent me a message saying t shirts are not selling, so they have started making face masks. So they're using the capacity to make face masks. So, yes, for them, the opportunity now they can't sell t shirts, but at least they've had the vision to change to make um, what you call uh, face masks and possibly that personal protective gear as well. So all that will create funding for them. Each of those gear that doctors wear every day, it just the market price just the cost it's about a thousand rupees so you can see how much is wasted uh sorry i wouldn't say wasted how much is required in a covid board there's at least about 10 of them so you're talking about at least ten thousand each of gear protective gear so obviously that's an opportunity right for that question which was asked in the chat okay. Okay, now Shiva has asked a question. What will be the effect of COVID situation? Obviously, the most important question everyone is asking is, can we have a vaccine? But today I was seeing to someone else is complaining about vaccines, saying vaccines can create other problems. So, so one of the claims by one of the virologists uh, in the US is uh, many people died in uh, Italy because they all had this flu jab, I believe. And these flu jabs are made from animal animals and all animals have coronavirus so because they were all taking that gap earlier on that's why the high number of death in Italy they say whether it's true or not we won't know so obviously the big question now is can we get a can we get a vaccine to, to stop it spreading but I think we should also think about what happens after the COVID because a lot of people are going to have mentally disturbed especially the social distancing now a lot of people are going to be scared to handshake to sit next to somebody, talk to somebody. They might be even distressed to go to hospital. I mean, sorry, not hospital, to work. So I think 
we need to be looking at innovations like that to not just you know for COVID, but post COVID, how will we help them? So, for example, you might need to have you know, uh, health, men, mental health drugs to help them cope with this. This um, I'm, I'm just giving an example. A lot of people are going to be mentally affected, especially where there's lots and lots of company working. You know, let's say the company has 10,000 people. People are going to be scared to talk to each other. So I think we also need to look at what happened after the COVID activity, not just for COVID. Because right now we're all talking only about COVID and not, not focusing on what happens afterwards. So I think that's very, very important for us to look at that as well. Uh, it's another question here from Ruchi. Let me just read it. What stage of product development is the right stage for pharma startups to raise equity funding? They're facing a problem of lower evaluation with just okay. This is a very easy question, actually. You should only raise money when you need money. You should not worry too much about evaluation, is my theory, because if you cannot survive, what's the point in the evaluation? It doesn't serve any purpose. So you may want to raise money only when you need money. You should not raise money for the sake of raising money. Pharma is not like e-commerce, right? it's all about evaluation game. Obviously, they will not give you a high evaluation when you are not even at preclinical -pre proof. So if you can raise for now, let's say a million dollars, you should go with it. And But during the race, you should have a plan with them that they will give you more money in the next, after you achieve certain milestones. So that's something you want to look at. Okay, and Deepak has asked a question. Uh, view on development of AI, MI, and most startups are big. Correct, but unfortunately, a lot of this AI and MI is just all hip. Everybody's just talking about it. Are they really using it? We don't know. So what one of the companies in, uh, what in Australia they do is, if you allow them to take your data, to build all these things, whenever the drug comes along, they give you the drug for free to use if you are a certain number of patients. So they started doing this about a couple of years ago in Australia, where, they would, where you would give them your data, and in return, they will give you the new, the new formulation based on AI and work. So that's... That's not a bad idea because people can get better. At least the data has been used wisely. So that is something you want to say that. And uh, uh, next one is uh, you mentioned. Okay, lousy will fall out. Somebody asks. Okay, now people who fall out are those who are not persistent. You have to be persistent, and you need to see the light end of the day. So often. We used to have a startup uh, for about 11, 12 years, nothing happened to it. But the co-founder of that startup with me, she was 100% sure it will go somewhere. And 12 years later, she sold the company at a very good price. So it all depends on that particular person, whether they have the ability to run that length. So I think it's important for you to make sure you don't fall into the lousy category that you make sure you focus on what you want to do. You need to be sure what's going to happen. You need to take advice from others, very true, but you don't fall for what they say. You need to be very sure what you want to do. So that's important. Tashiba has asked a question. How do we how do we encourage out pharma students to generally develop thinking towards problem solving? That's introducing special. See, one of the things you should do, and I think most universities should do, introduce a course on entrepreneurship get some entrepreneurship into the curriculum, make sure it's a compulsory curriculum. They need to at least get some credits for it. So under that, you can teach them how to do finance. You can teach them how to do marketing, and then they will be in a position to say whether yes or no. So at least they're equipped. So I think that's very, very important for you to do. We did this in a, in a, in a university in Malaysia called Cyberjaya. So it's a multimedia university in Cyberjaya where I used to sometimes teach years ago. And uh, the president was very determined that everybody, every student, including PhD students, had to pass a course. It was a one credit course only called cyberpreneurship. Everybody had to learn that course. And I taught every student in that university for three years. Every, every child who graduated from that university had to attend my course. That is the vision that president had. He made sure that everybody had to do that. So we need to be able to give them some kind of... Let me see some more questions here. Deepak is asking, what would major breakthrough areas in healthcare pharma be? Obviously, big areas are cancer treatment. You need to be able to do those cardiac uh, treatments, um, 
GIT specialist, pretty much the healthcare is now a happening place. So the pharma has a lot of opportunity in all these areas, as I've just mentioned, like cancer, um, new viruses, maybe all that, all those are there. So that would be your direction. And another 10 years is, is a good time. Only, you know, reading books today doesn't help Shiva. You need to give them some kind of practical experience, like maybe talk for 20 minutes. That's why the YouTube channel I started, we only talk for 20 minutes and then we leave it for the session. So for example, I don't know whether you've heard of Business Canvas. You may want to run a Business Canvas. Uh, you talk for 20 minutes and give them three or four hours to fill up the canvas. That would be something you want to do. Reading, reading alone doesn't help these kids nowadays because nobody likes to read. So unfortunately, we need to move to the new method of teaching. One question, Brandy, what is the near disruption coming in pharma industry? What is near disruption? See, what will be the near disruption? Obviously, uh, medicines which can be of affordable quantity, affordable value which can go in. For example, some of this uh, HIV, it costs a whole lot of money. So if you can reduce the cost for them and make it viable, that's what will be a breakthrough. Breakthrough is not necessarily just finding new things. It's also how the business model is. So the business model has to be very, very important. Now, is the pharma patent is threatening to India and how will it be accommodated? See, unfortunately, India has to work on the patents. If India doesn't work on patents, our drugs will not be patent protected. So they have to start enforcing some patent uh, issues. Now, the issue with patents, like some like the owner of uh, uh, Simpla says, it's not about paying. His contention is it's too expensive. He wants it made lower. So I think that's where we need to work on how the pharma industry will work on how to make it affordable. And next question, how can we stop people copying our ideas? That's a $1 million question. We cannot stop anybody from copying it for too long. So we have to keep innovating ourselves. And the likes of Narayana says, we should not be scared of competition. If we are, then we should shift out. So you cannot stop people from copying for too long. Somehow they'll copy. That's why you need to keep innovating. That's very, very important. One question from attendee is the treatment of moving from chemical to biological. Okay, I'm not an expert in that area, so I have to pass that question to chemical to biological. So I don't want to answer something I'm not familiar with. Okay, I think I've answered as quickly as I can most of the questions on the wall. Hopefully, I made sense in some of them, if not all. Anything, any other questions we have? Although, do we have some more questions? Yes, I'm, 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 I'm available. I, I'm, I'm available for you for the rest of the evening. Okay. Uh, can I start uh, anything? Hello? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, sir, yes sir. please go. Okay, uh, if there are no further questions, I want to have few comments. Uh, like, uh, into the current situation, everybody is worried now. What will be the post uh, uh, COVID situation? Mm. Yes, mm. Be, there are going to be challenges, but mm. the basics are not going to change in spite of that. Only thing, the basics. Should have been accepted, we have not accepted. Like uh, uh, the habits, habits of cleanliness, habit of uh, prevention of diseases. Mm. This is, it is being told for hundreds of years, at least last hundred years when the, uh, such a uh, pandemic came, it is mm. there, but yes. we have not accepted properly. So likewise, the pharma, Yes, there will be some change in the pharma. And mm. it is something like that currently the India was, or the Asian countries were known for the highly communicable diseases, uncontrollable. Mm. They were also picturized that countries means communicable diseases only we have to think, nothing mm. beyond this. It was difficult to convince that non-communicable diseases are equivalent and we have to attend to that. Now, current situation is Yes, Asian countries, it was less with respect to COVID. And control was also a little better. 
as we have been discussing. So situation may change any time. That is one part. But the basic remains that yes, diseases will. Now in India, we say what is the what are the opportunities in pharma? API is still a big big challenge. Why API has not come through? Then everybody is talking about the biological. Somebody asked the last question was that what about chemicals too? Are we going to biologicals? My answer will be that no, it cannot be like that. Yes, if or corona or the COVID stays, you need the biologicals only. That is that is going to be the main answer. And mm -hmm. probably one side biological and other side probably the herbals are going to be the answer because these are the important thing. And again, when we think like funding, when it comes, yes, every government practically is getting drained out of their funds. So it doesn't mean that they will not fund. Today, if you ask for the genuine idea, your funds will immediately come. Only difference is that now, like in our prime minister, our prime minister is sitting with the all the top authorities of the country to have a micro evaluation of what you are really doing in terms of vaccine, in terms of IOs, in terms of management, everything. He is minutely observing that. And everybody is working hard also, I can see that. But so opportunities, it's not that the funding will come. Now we have liberal funding. In my 40 years, I have never felt that funding is a real problem. The problem is how you start. So when it comes to the innovation and incubation, my idea is that, my feeling is that we always start, I mean, if you talk of anybody who talks about the incubation or startup, they always first focus on the idea. But this idea, how it comes, many students ask me, sir, idea, idea means what again? Idea, we, we get many ideas. See, the idea is, idea is based on number one, your subject knowledge first your subject should be good and then you have to go out of your subject so now you are definitely you should visualize what is going to come after the corona for this covid what will be the era so but it doesn't mean that the past things which are unsolved are solved no they are still the medical devices we were all talking about the medical devices. When we take artificial intelligence, can do a lot in that medical devices also. And it is required, nanotechnology to medical devices. Yes, you need to have that. So when you come to this, so basically have your ideas mixed with the technical, sound technical law. Try to have whatever you are studying, your B5, I can see there are many students uh, there in the listening to this. We really welcome you to be the uh, entrepreneurs and that's at our place. And I'm happy that in out of 16, five or six startups were all successful in our place. And if and for which I must compliment the whole team, including Dr. Bokli, that we are, we are we could churn out all like that. So. I mean, to the students particularly, I want to tell that please think from the subject itself, which subject interests you more. If you are more interested in chemistry, think of API immediately, how you can do it fast. If you are interested in pharmacology, start thinking that yes, how new drug can be discovered or so what can we think of the newer strategy. If you are feeling that you are more interested in your pharmaceuticals is becoming more favorite to you, pharmaceuticals, Yes, what typical formulation, but this is not going to be enough unless you know the market outside, unless you know what sufferings your neighbors or your others are getting. So club that thing together, you will definitely come out with the idea. And idea, as you rightly gave the advice to Dr. Manish, uh, I mean, Mr. Manish, uh, Abhina, sorry, Amish, Abhina Vagrawal, that the... Uh, the screening and all that. Yes, we have to be, I mean, we cannot see everything from the technical point. There are many parameters which are coming in. When we think of pitching in somebody, we have to have many parameters also. Parameters means, yes, this idea, and we have to support with the market also. Research, very, you have to identify a market also. 
who will be your customers and how easy and difficult they will be so if you do that way i think you can screen them properly it will be a little tight there's nothing like a tight or loose but it it may be a funny idea but it has to be done i mean it need not to be like that but funny idea but relate everything relate to market when it comes to that entrepreneurship and the incubation is more market oriented need based and you have to forecast it may be wrong also we may not be see when our chancellor our uh, honorable uh, lieutenant governor when we were presenting me and dr pooj we both were present chancellor uh, what this uh, you are coming about this is sanitary sanitization and all these things now how important they are you can realize i don't know at that time what we had thought but certain uh, opportunities may change also and it is a re really a good thing which we have come out with this disinfectant and all that so you never know but yes you have to have that risk it may not be apparent in the beginning but they may come but you should be clear that yes it is there so with these if you do and yes what uh, it has been talked about uh, they are really wonderful the messages which have been given in a very simplistic i i must compliment and i mean i'm thankful that you have given such a in a very lucid language you have given your talk and you have addressed all questions in a such a nice way that i think all those who are listening this uh, they are attending the seminar they will be benefited by it so i i mean this is what i want to tell to you all thank you very much for the kind words there's two more questions i'll try to answer them as well um vandana has asked Uh, are we going to ignore everything else and just focus on covid well we shouldn't unfortunately that's the way things are going but we shouldn't do that and i agree with the vice chancellor we need to do what we are good at is no point jumping on something we are not good at so let's not just focus on covid covid is important but we should also get on with other things is it the right time to start a, start a startup or There is no right or wrong time to start a startup. It's up to you whether you are ready to do a startup or you are not ready to do a startup. So I think that's very important. Next question, someone has asked: Can we connect with people or make them a part of our business model on a larger scale? I don't understand what you mean exactly by that. Of course, you can always connect with other people, but it's always nicer to work with people you know because you, when you work, you also need to know their personal behaviors. an intention if two people start to work together and they are not having the same vision things can be a little difficult that's why you end up seeing after some time the two founders might not get along so those are things you want to make sure you take care of to start with next question what are the problems and pains that our immediate customers doctors face with respect to founder design concern how could we solve it i guess another i mean i don't know whether this is a uh, most patients and most doctors they like to stick to the same drugs right so i think that's something which we may have to be look at and how we will solve that like for example even take me i would only go to a certain doctor and only take a certain type of medicine and the doctor would only give me a certain type of medicine because he knows something works for me so i think those are things we need to a little bit be open and let the doctor or whoever to decide what we should take how would the uh, respect of how would you solve that so i think that's what we need to do we need to let the customer and doctor understand what else is going next question there is by ankit sir can we see an increase in more such disease outbreak in the future if i could answer that question i would become a millionaire so i think i'll leave that one also would it be possible on my part to see the current situation as an opportunity in pharma startup of course every issue creates an opportunity it's just how you take the opportunity now if you have done no work and i i want to emphasize what the vice chancellor very carefully said if you have not if you do not understand uh, these viruses you should not even think of getting in right now because it's not that kind of a easy road if you are very familiar and you've been working with these viruses for the last what 3 5 years then yes you probably could jump in and try something but going into something which you have no clue i think it's not a good idea and i think my slide which is still there i the important part of that is market time to market scalability and knowledge i think would be the leader if you don't have knowledge you will not be able to complete a startup in a good way that's why medical startups healthcare pharma life sciences biotech they have very little success 
because we don't have enough people who have the knowledge to get into it and start unlike it where we have so much abundant knowledge so i think that's something we need to also do is to increase especially in terms of we struggle getting good researchers at our center for medical medical devices so i think that is something as as an institution we need to focus to give them the good fundamental um, basic science to make sure they're able to continue with the new discovery uh, you asked telepharma is it possible with the current situation of course one of my sons he's doing a startup where he's doing this lockdown clinic he's got over 500 doctors on it now and this 500 doctors on this platform to subscribe medicine so that's how it is uh, it is happening so yes it is of course a, a huge benefit and what you should with current policies government will be i think uh, the government is quite positive they would allow many things to happen it's only objections will come from possibly the medical fraternity but however the policies of telemedicine is now they are allowing it so there are people doing lockdown clinic my son is helping them with the technology where they all the prescriptions are sent out on whatsapp after the doctor talks to them so all that is happening so yes there's plenty of opportunity in telepharmacy how can we take our idea to platform and in we can we get help from the government in funding see we should not worry about funding and i i also agree again with your vice chancellor funding will come from anywhere if there is an op if you're doing something which is worthy so please 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 be sure about what you are wanting to do make sure you have a good understanding before you can do all that so don't get into something we are, we are not we are not doing something is there a difference between telepharmacy and telemedicine i guess there is in telepharmacy you're probably just doing medicines uh, you're probably just subscribing in telemedicine not necessarily you're giving drugs you could be sending them for other things or not doing anything at all. so uh, in what what do you mean telepharmacy i would understand as people are buying medication or whatever online by telephone talking to the doctor and telemedicine would be more complete solution that would be my understanding uh, about this ankit's question i would like to tell something it is a little interesting ankit uh, that what about that focusing on the virus see what has happened is that for last 10 20 years we are seeing all these things coming up uh, dengue came in before that, uh, I mean, after dengue, uh, uh, swine flu, Zika virus. Now, we are seeing this from time to time. H1N1, you know, that swine flu, dengue. So, but if you see all these viruses, they are having a small, I mean, if you see the sequences, the differences are not that great also. The chicken gunia to begin with, then dengue, then this, the characteristics start changing. And remember that one of the company was preparing the vaccine or the trial for the, the like for the understanding or diagnostics of Zika. Zika did not come. I could see in the airport also Zika or all that, but but this corona COVID came in, SARS and all that again, they were there. So this thing is going to continue, let me tell you now because they are in the uh, i mean it is not no longer in the chinese lab or anything like that and we are predicting i hope it is wrong but but it has all over the world now and these viruses may change their characteristics and they may come in the form of other virus so if you have this idea how these viruses are what are their sequences how the vaccine or diagnostic can be pre prepared in general, you will have plenty of opportunities in future. Yeah, I think uh, you are right. It's, opportunities will always be there. It's only we have to take this. I'm, I'm not sure whether we would want to replace the doctors. Of course, pharmaceutical professionals would be able to to handle this with the with the guidance because in some countries, like in the UK and all, you can't buy certain medicines if the pharmacist is not in the in the pharmacy. They won't give you the medicines. 
unless he's there to verify what the doctor has returned for you. So I don't think we can get away with either of them. Of course, within the limitation of the law, you should be able to do something with the telepharma. I want to request all to be quick with their questions as we are about to end the session in the next five minutes. So I want everyone to be a bit quick with their questions. Uh, Dr. Muthu, can you also throw some light on the uh, future role of uh, clinical research, the role of AI investigator? Because in the future, when we are seeing there is a social distancing, so how you think that the CRO or the clinical research is going to shape up? Or is there any opportunities, you know, you can some, throw some light on it? For sure, if we can have AI working, we can have robots working, we would save a lot of lives and a lot of equipment. So obviously there is plenty of, uh, especially giving food and medicines in the hospital, if it can be delivered by a robot, we don't need, like I just now told you, each ward apparently needs 10 to 20 people working from, even a ward of 30 people for coronavirus. So one of my friends who runs the hospital was telling me last night, he needs 20 people there just to be managing the, and he's only got four patients right now, and he's got a maximum of 40. So now if we had intelligence working, he probably doesn't need 20 people there. And now he also told me if any one of them gets coronavirus, he has to bear the cost. He has to keep them in the hospital. And I was shocked. The cost in the private hospital for coronavirus patient is it's 25,000 rupees a day. Can you believe it? And you got to be in the hospital for at least 10 to 14 days. So it's, it's, a, it's a whole lot of money. It's because they're paying those people who work in there a lot, one and a half times, I believe. So I, your, your question, to answer your question, yes, AI will definitely play a role, but it will not replace completely. It will make our lives easier. I mean, has video conferencing taken away face-to-face -face meetings? Not really. It has just increased right now because we have no choice. And as I was saying to somebody this morning, it's okay to do a one-hour seminar online. You can't do a two-day seminar online. Why do we all go to seminars? We go there for in networking. We go there to meet people. And some people go there for a holiday. When you're doing it on, online for two days, you, you will not even be watching it. You will put it on and you'll go around the house doing nothing. So I think everything has its limitations and everything and we need to obviously change as we go along i mean years ago uh, we didn't have telephones today who does it mean? yeah yes we see please so i think everything will change correct i request all as we are about to end our sessions can everyone uh, can everyone turn on their cameras please sure can I just wrap up with my two slides? Sure. Yes, I think you can switch on your camera as well. I'm trying. Uh, let me put my right. spectacle. Can you see my face? Yes, yes, yeah. sure. So my, my, I always ask for this. Please identify your key takeaway. How does it relate to you? And how are you going to share it with others? Because I think the key is how we can share with others. Even we learn one thing, there was 40 of us here, we have learned 40 new things, which is which is really good for all of us. And I respond to all my emails, which your team can vouch for. I respond almost instantly. That's my email, mutu.singaram at vibazone.com. My telephone, sometimes I can't pick up because you know I'm doing stuff, but I always pick it up. And I also have a couple of books on uh, entrepreneurship and incubation on um, on Amazon, which the AICT chairman asked us to reduce to the bad price. So the downloads are 50 rupees or something, I can't remember. And I just opened a new YouTube channel, which I'm trying to do different, different activities as we go along. So I've started with the last night, which has gone for 18 sessions. Then I'll probably do another 18 sessions on uh, Entrepreneurship. So basically, what I will do is it's all will be 20 minute sessions. So people will be able to understand and then come back the next time. So that's that's me. And I'm always happy to associate myself in any way which I can be of any help. And I also thank my team for being online there because I asked them to be online for them to also get experience and to get connected. And I want to thank the organizers, especially Shiba who called me. 
and the professor and also your VC for helping me uh, reinforcing some of the points. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for us giving the answer. Once the lockdown is once the lockdown is done, I'll come visit you. Sure, sure. Most welcome. Most welcome. Thank you so much, and we are really grateful that you know you could spend uh, some time with our kind of this thing, and I'm sure you know this is enlightened all of us. And I would you know seeing some of the downloads and some of the Kinder option which you had given, and uh, specifically I advise to all the all our students, you know, or some startups, you know, they can really be benefited because I was going through it for some time and it was really amazing to read the material which you have. And that's a great service to the, you know, the entire world of your sharing your kind of a knowledge. And uh, as you know, as the last, we can conclude that, you know, it's always a very interdisciplinary field. When we talk about pharma and most of the startups which we talk about pharma is mostly and medical devices is all the engineering, you know, where some science from a pharma has been filled in. So we all need to, you know, collaborate together. Somehow marketing may be done by any one of it, but uh, the main thing by the entrepreneur is if we can see all the value chain and can, you know, progress further into that. That's thanks again to you. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. Okay. I request okay, Shubham, ma'am, to kindly close the session with a remark, please. Okay. I think our network is broken, so thanks a lot, Muthu sir. Thanks a lot for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and we'll stay in touch with you. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Wonderful. Thank you.